Hi, my name is Lestiner Inspires, and I am looking to change the narrative of what trauma and abuse looks like. From shame, silence, and stigma, to support and solutions. From hopelessness and rejection, to healing and recovery. How do I plan on doing that? By bringing awareness that the problem that goes with not talking about what you've been through, not addressing it, not only affects that individual, but it affects us as a community. It affects us as a society. Hey, 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 y'all. It's Lil Steiner Inspires coming at you live with your Teach, Lead, and Heal teaching series. As y'all can see, I got a vacation pants. See, my chocolate mocha latte skin is glowing. So, anywho, um, thank you all. I know this, I didn't do a, um, I guess, a day ahead, a few days ahead announcement of me going live because I actually didn't plan on going live until next week because I was like, I need to prepare some notes, but God, okay? So, anywho, thank you guys for tuning in. Those who catch this live, those of you who catch the replay, thank you also for tuning in. Make sure you like, share, and subscribe. Thank you very much. And for those of you who don't know who I am, let me reintroduce myself. My, my name is V. Lil Steiner Inspires. I'm an award-winning author. I'm a creative strategist. I am the author of five books. One of those books are award-winning. I am also a workshop facilitator specializing in helping those that have gone through trauma and abuse learn how to live beyond their trauma and walk into their healing for their best healed life. So once again, thank you for tuning in. Without further ado, we're going to talk about how to kick fear out your life. And so um, today, you know, I had no plans of going all out. Like I said, I was taking my morning walk and, you know, I just, I was, I had a great conversation with my brother. I was talking to him about some dreams and goals of mine. And as always, as a wonderful big brother that he is, was just encouraging me and telling me like, man, you're going to do great when this next move, you're going to be awesome. And, you know, I'm just like, Okay, you know, I was excited, but I was also like, who is he talking about, right? Um, and so, but I'm sitting here cheesing as a little sister walking down the street like, yeah, okay, that's my brother. He's supposed to hide me up. But then I was like, yo, no, he's actually like, he has faith in me. He believes in what I'm doing. He believes in the vision that I have. And so I was encouraged. And as I was walking back home, I was just like, you know what, I need to go live. And I'm like, I don't have notes prepared. I, I, you know, I know what the topic is for the next couple of weeks of teaching, but I don't, I haven't prepared my notes. Like I just got back from vacation last week. And so, but I just felt the Holy Spirit like, you don't, you don't need to be always prepared, overly prepared for things. Go in and do teach and lead as I, you know, lead you. And I'm like, okay. And so I started to think about, what the topic is, which is fear. Um, and this is part of the Teach, Lead, and Heal, Teach, Lead, and Heal teaching series, Living Beyond Trauma. Um, and so I was just like, okay, so what am I going to talk about with fear? Because I, I mean, I have some, some key points of things I've talked about before, but what am I talking about today? Because I, you know, I haven't, like I said, planned this out or written notes. Well, opposition. Fear is the ops. Okay. okay, so, so and for those of you may not know, like ops, you know, you might watch, I don't know if you watch crime shows or shows with gangsters or whatever, and it always talks about the ops, like the people who you are opposed against, the opposite side, the opposition, right? And so I thought about how myself, how fear has um, been in my life since I was a shorty and has caused me to not do a lot of things because of fear and so I was like and so the three things that I want we will be talking about over the next couple of, couple of weeks are overthinking procrastination and perfectionism those are the three byproducts of fear and so, you know, like I said, I was just thinking, like, okay, I don't have notes, but I'm going to let the Holy Spirit flow because he obviously, this is a message that's for me as well as everyone else who's listening in. And so when I think about opposition, I think about like the thing that is going against you, 
whether you know for instance like when you if you go work out and there's like resistant training right you're trying you're you're you put on the resistant bands usually those help you to build up your muscles build up your stamina build up you know whatever you need in, in order to get to where you're going but what fear does is creates a a barrier that can sometimes stop you dead in your track from moving forward and where you're trying to be and so the question I have for you today is, have you ever noticed how fear has kept you from truly living? I'm going to be very transparent. Okay, very, very transparent. Um, I have a fear of water. Now, this may sound crazy to those who know me because I love being by the water. I love going to the beach. I love any vacation spot that has water. And I will tread in the water up until like my ankle, maybe my little shin bone. But the idea of not having anything to hold on to, the idea of this, this big body of water I could possibly drown um, gives me great anxiety and great fear. So much so that I will go to the beach and just look at the water sometimes. And I'm sharing this because I, as you know, I went on a vacation for three weeks in, well, you don't know where, but I was in Belize and I was like the sea, beautiful, just, oh my God. And there were moments where, like, the whole family would be out in the water playing, do this, and I would just be at, just watching them at the edge of the shore with my feet just, you know, splashing around, wanting to go deeper because the water, just go as far as you go out, comes like right here. I'm like five foot seven, so I'm tall. I'm not gonna drown. I can get up, right? But fear has me thinking that I will drown in that little bit of water, right? And so, but there was moments where I cried out to the Lord, like, I know you have not given me the spirit of fear. And the fact that I love to travel and the places I love to go are surrounded by water is uh, indicated that I need to overcome this. And so, you know, every, every time I went to the beach, my my goal was to, to step out further and further. Sometimes I conquered, sometimes I, I was able to do it. Other times, like, I would just be overwhelmed with the fear and, and to tears and come back to the shore. The point I'm trying to make is that I, I'm aware and, I, and I'm and I'm I've acknowledged that this is something that I need to overcome. There were moments where I would see my family, everybody out in the water, splashing, having fun, and because of my fear, all I could do was watch. All I could do in my mind was just watch them have fun as I allowed fear to cripple me from having the fun that I really, you know, wanted to have. How many of us have been crippled in our lives like that? Maybe it's not water. Maybe it's stepping out on your own. Maybe it's starting your business. Maybe it's living the dream life that you always wanted to live. Maybe it's quitting that job that's giving you stress. Maybe it's leaving that relationship that is toxic. Whatever it is, fear will have you standing at a, at a standstill, not being able to move forward, because of the fear of what might happen that might never actually happen but you are afraid that it will now why am i afraid of water like big bodies of water is because i don't know how to swim and i'm afraid of drowning okay that's just my that's my truth right but i realize that even like i serve a guy a great guy that is awesome that the that would not let me just get out somewhere and just drown. First of all, second of all, I have to, I have the common sense to not go into larger bodies of water where I would need to swim back to because I cannot swim. But yet, fear get puts limitations on our lives. Fear puts limitations on our mind. Right? Fear causes us to shrink back, to step back, to be on the sidelines of life, watching everybody enjoy their life while we ponder on how we can go and do the same thing that sounds crazy because in god's word okay i'm gonna give you word because i this word is is life second timothy one and seven in the new king james version says for for, for god has not given us a spirit of fear but of power and love and a sound mind let's talk about that a little bit he has not given a spirit of fear so how does fear come into our life if he didn't give it to us, how does it happen? Where does it come into? How does it enter into our lives? For me, I could tell you fear entered into my life via trauma and abuse at a young age. Um, fearing for my life, fearing just everything, 
that's how fear entered into my life. Trauma and abuse opens the door for so many things to enter into our lives that were never meant to be. And sometimes we find ourselves as adults trying to, to um, live through this process of healing and still have this fear lingering over our lives. And so 2 Timothy 1 and 7 became a my favorite scripture in 2020 when I got diagnosed with cancer because I honestly lived in perpetual fear um, during that time, fear of dying, fear of, of not making it through, fear of getting some other sickness. Like, and that in itself was very um, traumatic. It was, uh, it was traumatic emotionally for me. It was traumatic mentally. And so I had to rely on that scripture to keep me grounded in the fact that God didn't give me the spirit of fear. That yes, I have this diagnosis, but he's going to get me through it. And praise God, I am in remission, no with cancer, period, for like going on two years. And I had to, I had to rely on that, on God, stand on God's word, even when fear tried to tell me the opposite, because you know, fear would try to tell you the opposite of what God is telling you. That's why fear is the opposition. Okay. Because fear tells you the opposite of what God is telling you. God will tell you that you're loved and you can do all things through him that strengthens you. Right. Fear will tell you, you can't do that. You're not equipped. Who are you? Why can't what makes you think you're going to be successful? That is fear. Fear is a liar. Fear is manipulative. Fear would use the, the pain of your past and tell you, oh, remember when that happened? Well, what if this happened? Remember how that turned out? What if it happened like that? That's how fear works on our minds and our hearts and our, and our emotions and our mental stability. So much so that it cripples us from living the life that we always dreamed of. It causes us to stand on the shore of life and watch everybody else live and wonder why we can't do it. Why you, you can do it. You just got to step up, up beyond that fear. You just got to trust in the God that has not given you the spirit of fear, but has given you power. Power in him has given you a sound mind because it begins in your thought process. So a man thinking, so he is. So if you tell yourself you can do all things through Christ that strengthens you, then you have to believe that and move forward in that action step of doing it. And love, the love of God that he will not let anything happen to you. He And if something happens to you, he's going to see you through it, right? But a lot of times we... Fear of the unknown causes us to not even move forward in where we need to be or what we desire to be. How many of us are waiting to, to make big moves? We're waiting for the right moment. The right moment is now. I, I mean, the right moment is when you opened your eyes and God breathed life into your, into your body. That's the right moment. So the three things that we're going to talk about, and not today, but over the next few weeks, is, is the ops. ops. Fears are ops, right? Ops, OPP. Overthinking, procrastination, and perfectionism. If you've ever had fear in your life, you've experienced, you have either experienced one of these three or all three. I'm going to raise my hand, be honest. I have, I have definitely been an overthinker. I definitely have procrastinated. Hence me doing the, the teaching today. I was going to procrastinate and wait until next week when I had the notes and then perfectionism, which that flows into that. I wanted the notes to be perfect. I wanted to have all the bullet points and the teaching points. But then how would God move through me if I had everything already figured out, right? So we're going to talk about that over the next few weeks. We're going to talk about those three things, overthinking, procrastination, and perfectionism. Because fear is the ops of, and it's literally the opposition in your life that's stopping you from being what God wants you to be, from doing what God wants you to do, from living the life that you want to live, the dream life that you've been been imagining since you was a shorty doo-wop, okay? So if you want to kick fear out your life permanently, stand on the word of God and stand on faith that the things that he has for you is for you and you will get them. Tune in every Tuesday. I am committed. You guys hold me accountable because I know myself. I might be like, oh, these notes ain't perfect. I'm going to wait till next week to bring it. But I also myself has to, this teaching is, is for me too. This is personal. 
This is me coming after everything that God has said is mine, okay? And coming for it and telling fear, you got to go. I'm kicking fear out of my life. So join me together as we walk this thing through together, baby. Well, I kick fear out of my life and you kick fear out of yours. And we go after everything that God said is for us. Because, baby, God wants us to live a great life beyond the things that we've experienced. And we cannot live that life if we are held bound by fear. So I thank you guys for tuning in. Uh, I'm going to just close out in prayer and then I'll see you next Tuesday. Father God, I thank you, Lord, that the people will be set free from the spirit of fear, Lord. I ask that you continue to use my platform, to use me and my voice as a vessel of change in the lives of those who are held bound by fear, who are held bound by the trauma they experience, Lord. Let healing start to begin as they hear the words that you have given me, as they hear the teachings that you have allowed me to be able to give the people, Lord. Let their freedom be in the, the healing of the words that I'm speaking, Lord. I thank you for the lives that are listening, the lives that will be touched. In Jesus' name we pray, amen. So, guys, thank you for tuning in. Um, I am definitely going to be here next Tuesday because now I, I just told you guys I would. So I got to stick to my word and be held accountable. And so thank you. Make sure you share, comment, um, inbox if you have questions. And I'll see you next Tuesday because we about to kick fear out today, baby. Woo Love you guys. Blessings. Have a great day. Trauma and abuse affects everyone, and we all have a part to play to change the narrative with love.